Good morning, wildfire superheroes. Superhero Jenny reporting for duty this morning. Hello, hey, hello, I'm over here. Can you see me? No, 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 not over there, over here. Can you see me? Oh, good morning, everyone. Uh, can you see me now? I, I was just practicing my superhero vanishing act. Um, did I trick you? Maybe not. It would be kind of fun though, to be invisible just for a day, wouldn't it? Imagine all the mischief you could get up to and trick people. Well, good morning and welcome again to Wildfire Online and to your superhero basics training. I've got a little challenge for you first, all, first off to start with this morning. I want you to have a look at this image on the screen and see what you can see. Now you've got to look really closely because there's more than meets the eye. A psychologist called Edgar Rubin developed this image to show a visual effect where people can see two different shapes, but only one shape at a time. What can you see when you look at this image? Can you see two faces or can you see a white vase? We're, we're all looking at the same Im image, but different people see different things and they see it in different ways. If you want to look at the image a bit more, you could maybe just pause the video so you could study it. Well, do you know, as superheroes in training, you need to know that there is always more than one way to look at things. You see, in life, we can see a lot of problems around us. And this balloon here is going to represent some of those problems. But you know, the exciting thing is that there are so many opportunities for us to make an impact and to make a difference in those problems. You see, sometimes we see small problems. Maybe like a mess that needs cleaned up in our classroom or someone falls over and hurts themselves at playtime and you stop and help them. But you know, at other times we can see much larger problems and the more we look at them, the bigger we realise that they are. Maybe you know of friends who are really lonely. Or friends whose parents have maybe lost their job and they're just really struggling to pay for things. Or maybe we hear of all the people that are getting sick around the world from coronavirus or other illnesses. These problems can seem really, really huge. But do you know that even seemingly small things, a bit like this pin here, you might not be able to see it, but I've got a pin. And Things like this can make a big difference. We sometimes think that what we do is too small to make a difference, that the problem is just too big. But small things can make a big difference. But you know, the truth is we're never too young and we're never too small to make a difference. And when you see an opportunity to help others and do something about the problems around you, even something really small can have a huge impact. <laughs> Our seemingly small actions can actually make a really big difference to the problems around us. Did you know something? Did you know that there are over 7 million people in the world on planet Earth? And that's spread over 196 countries uh, on seven continents and millions of cities. Now that's a lot of people. And it's easy to think that one person can't make a difference when you're just one in 7 billion people. But the truth is, you can. First of all, our actions can affect the people around us. Think of someone in your life who has had a big impact on you. Maybe it's someone in your family, one of your friends or one of your teachers or a friend at church perhaps. Your life might, be, might have been changed because of that one person. We certainly can't get to meet all 7 billion people in the world, can we? But we will meet the people in our part of the world. And you can have a big impact on your friends, in your school, and even in your wider community. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 6 says, Do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is very pleased. Do you know every day we have a chance to look for opportunities to do good and to share with others, and God loves it when we show love and care to one another. There's a saying about helping others and it goes like this. To the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. 
I'll say that once more. To the world you may be one person, but to one person you may be the world. Well, this term at Wildfire Kids Church, we're learning all about some everyday heroes from the Bible. They were everyday people just like you and me. You might say they were unlikely heroes. And throughout the Bible, God worked through unexpected people in incredible ways. And so the wonderful news is that he can work through you and he can work through me too. Well, today's hero from the Bible is Nehemiah. Nehemiah was the cupbearer to the king and his job was to protect the king and to ensure the quality and safety of the king's food and drink. So it was an important job and it gave him a lot of influence with the king. Now I'm going to tell you just one part of the story. One day, one of Nehemiah's brothers came to him and told him some bad news. He told him that the walls of Jerusalem were where, where Nehemiah's family came from were in ruins. The walls had completely crumbled and even worse, the Jewish people's lives were in ruins too. They had turned away from God and their life was extremely hard. And this made Nehemiah very, very sad. So sad, in fact, that he actually cried for days. And he also prayed. He said, dear God, please, please help your people. And as he prayed, he actually began to see that this was in fact an opportunity. An opportunity for the city walls and for God's people to be restored. Nehemiah knew that he had to do something about it. If only he could, the king would let him go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls of his city. So he prayed. He prayed that God would give him courage to ask the king for permission. And do you know what? When he did, the king remarkably said yes. Here's a picture of the walls of a city. And this is a more modern picture, but you can see how tall and strong the city walls are. Walls were extremely important to a city in those days because they protected the people from their enemies and they kept their city safe. But when Nehemiah arrived and looked around the city, his heart sank. It was so much worse than he imagined and it was going to take lots of hard work to rebuild the walls. But Nehemiah declared, with God's help, we can do it. So the people rolled up their sleeves and they gathered their tools and they got to work. And everybody helped working in family groups and they started fixing the gates and worked on the walls. Each morning from dawn until dusk, they worked stone by stone, putting the walls together and they became higher and higher. But as they were building, their enemies laughed at them and they made fun of them. And as they continued to build, their enemies made plans to attack them. But God's people didn't give up. They worked hard with a sword in one hand and they kept building with the other. At one point, Nehemiah actually arranged that while half of the people were building, the other half would stand guard. Some of them would even watch all through the night so that they could see if trouble was coming. But finally, after 52 days, the walls of the city were finished. Ezra the priest read God's laws to the people and they praised God for protecting them. It was time to celebrate. And thanks to Nehemiah seeing an opportunity to make a difference, the walls had been rebuilt and the city of Jerusalem would be safe. You see, heroes see the opportunity. Heroes see the opportunity. Nehemiah cared for God's people and when they were in trouble, he saw an opportunity to help. And the thing is, Nehemiah wasn't a king. He wasn't even a priest or a prophet. He wasn't the most likely person to be a hero, but he saw the opportunity and he did something about it. And rebuilding the city walls was not an easy job, not like just what I just did, because it was a huge wall and it was extremely hard work. And it took him away from his duties as the cupbearer to the king. But Nehemiah knew that he had to make a difference. And another thing is he didn't get involved so that he could just become famous. He got involved because he saw an opportunity to help people. I wonder, what, what do you do when you see an opportunity to help others? 
There's so many opportunities to make a difference in our world. It can be overwhelming, like we said before, to think about all the problems that people face. And as individuals, we certainly can't do everything, but we can work together. And the truth is, we all have the power to do something that helps others. So what problems do your friends face around you? Maybe it's loneliness and you can be a friend to them. Maybe it's sickness and you can pray for them or make a card for them to deliver. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So start helping with one person and then you might just find that you can help a whole community of people and beyond. Well, that's all for me for now. So I pray you have a very blessed day and a blessed week. And until next time, remember, heroes see the opportunity. Bye, everybody. See ya.